After our encounter with the ghost sniper that had taken out our Hellcat and Comet along with damaging our Stug, we were able to get most of our tanks fixed up enough to carry on. However, our new friends in the STRV along with our Comet needed to head back to the garage due to the condition they were in. Our light tanks met back up with us to help escort the damaged tanks to a garage while the Russian family mentioned they had spotted a base camp across the other side of the desert during their travels and that it could be good for us to look into. We packed our things and began to depart back across the desert through the plague's conquered territory while the other friends made their way to return to the garage in the Black Goldville fields to get their tanks back in perfect working order. They disappeared going their own way as we also disappeared to the next step in our journey to see what the Russian family had spotted along their way. As we continued on, the dry wind of the desert lands held sand against our armored vehicles once more. The sight of destroyed tanks seems to become more frequent as clans and tanks lay waste from the wake of destruction the plague was leaving behind through each progression they made throughout while conquering more lands. It almost seemed like suicide to be tracking through plague-owned territory, as if we were found, any division from the surrounding areas could close in on us fast. While we rolled on through, we tried to keep a low profile by traveling through the low points of the dunes in the land to try and resist from being spotted. A Russian father picks up something moving in the distance as they decide to turn and peek barely over one of the nearby dunes. They radio in for us to do the same as we all begin to get eyes on one of the plague's divisions once more but leaves us confused as we notice the division seems to be backtracking toward the area we just came from moving in the direction of the mine land fields. We start to wonder if the ghost we encountered earlier might have been a plague tank and had notified them of our position when we were there. As we watch the tanks of the plague continue to pass through, we started to hear a strange sound of something in the distance behind us. A panic shock overtook us as we carefully looked out over the desert once more while the whispering sounds of death continued to blow over the sands and creak through the rotting, punctured, rusted holes of each destroyed tank that lay around us. This was not the place to encounter any threat as the sound of a cannon could attract the attention of nearby plague divisions in the area. We decided to move on back through the scene of destruction to try to get eyes on the mysterious noise heard before us as the scent of death had overtaken some parts of the land crept into the walls of our metal homes. We stopped as we began to hear the unique sound of a turret beginning to rotate. In a race to spot the unknown target among us, we quickly look around as the sight of a large metal monster we've never seen before crawls out from the sand and comes out from behind one of the destroyed tanks near us. We gas it to turn around and not fire upon it to give our position away to the plague. It begins to take aim on us and fires to blast its loud cannon our way while ripping off some of the armor from one of our tanks as we try to race away across the dunes. The echo carries itself throughout the nearby lands as we look back and continue to see the scrap metal monster still trying to aggressively move on us. We continue to try and escape as another shell flies to barely miss one another of our tanks and explodes against the sand nearby. Just as we realize we're gaining distance on the slower dead tank behind us, we start to see and approach some canyons ahead to try and lose it for good. It loads one more round and takes aim, but before the shot can be taken, a shell flies into it while punching right through the side of its turret and goes through the other side, bringing it to a halt. The beast turns its turret to try and figure out where the shot came from as the sight of the plague division we lost sight of earlier starts to close in on where they had heard the dead tanks cannon. As the monster sets its sights upon the plague, it fires to blast away one of the plague tanks moving upon it. Explosions from the plague's cannon in the distance begin to flash as the sound and sight of more shells hitting against the monster starts to rip it apart. The plague begins to draw nigh as the sound of another one of its shells loads into its rusted large cannon 
as it takes aim on another plague number. The plague try to scatter before the shot, but as they do, another blast hits another plague tank, ripping it apart with a single shot. More shells rain down upon the metal monster we had encountered as it tries to angle itself against its new enemy, but becomes trapped, and more shells begin to penetrate its weaker side armor, beginning to damage it more. Just before it disappears out of view, a thought comes into my mind to turn around and save the tank that had tried to kill us. It seemed crazy, but then realized this is what we do. If there's ever gonna be a chance to survive the plague, we have to see if we can get another one to join us. Every tank counts, I continue to think to myself. I stopped our tank and radioed to the rest of the clan to stop as well. What are you doing? The crew of the KV-2 calls back to us. We have to save it, it's what we do. We eventually won't be able to make it if all we do is run. Every tank counts, I reply back, but the sound of some saying we're crazy comes over the radio while we turn our destroyer around. The plague's tanks close in upon the struggling monster we had escaped as they encircle and stop around it. The leader of the division comes out as we align our sights to assess the situation to see if we might have a chance to save it. What do you think, the Russian father radios in as it pulls up next to us along with the rest of our group realizing what must be done. As I finish counting the plague's tanks, the risk and survival came down to if the monster would work with us or against us. You're trespassing on plague territory, the plague leader calls out, but no response is heard from the beast as steam and smoke continue to arise from the wounded monster. Is it dead? A plague tanker asks, as the commander yells to give the signal for execution, just as we pull our trigger to fire our shell to watch it flash into their leader and blows them up. The rest of the plague starts to reverse to turn around and assess where the shot came from, just as the monster's cannon starts to screech and move towards the nearest plague tank once more. The plague tank, noticing the dead tank's cannon, tries to quickly swing their cannon back to fire first, but gets blown away from the impact of the monster's cannon before they have a chance to defend themselves. The plague starts to aim back at the beast as we press around the surrounding hills to also take aim and fire upon the plague and close before us. More of our shells smash against the armor of the plague as they too fire again at the beast and cripple it completely and fire back at us as we begin to also take hits. They start to flank and scatter to take positions around us as our lights try to flank from another advantageous position. The plague advances while firing as we take more hits as we too fire from our covered positions to hit more of them. We try to do what we can as the Russian family comes up from behind and fires into the rear of one of the tanks damaging its engine. The sight of the plague's light tanks race around to take aim on the Russian family as shots fire, causing their tanks and to get penetrated to break it and bring it to a stop. Just before the plague light tanks are able to finish off our T-34, our M4 races along in front of them to put a shell right into one of the plague incoming tanks, causing it to explode and bring it to a stop as well. The sound of a loud engine from a plague heavy tank roars over a hill to zoom down and crash into our M4 as it barely misses it and smashes against the other light plague tank while destroying it. The heavy tank tries to turn its turret to take aim on the Russian family to finish them off, but the Russian family and the M4 take aim on them to fire just in time to take it out. The remaining plague tanks advance as we fire to penetrate the sides of one of their turrets as they turn to take aim on us and fire as we back up to try and hide behind the doom once more but knocks out one of our tracks leaving us stuck in a bad position. Our KV-2 comes around to aim as the plague tank that fired upon us turns to look down the gaping hole of its barrel before it as the crew is heard yelling to try and load another round but gets blasted away by the loud explosion of the KV-2. The last plague tank starts to reverse to try to retreat and to radio into the surrounding plague divisions for support, just as our French heavy comes around the corner to aim and fires around right through their tank to kill the crew inside, bringing the battle to an end.
We all climb out of our tanks, and the ones that were still mobile centered itself around the dead tank that originally attacked us. We continue to wait and watch to see if any sort of life would emerge from the unknown creature before us. As we started to wonder if anyone was inside, the sound of a tanker yells from within to please not shoot as they surrender. The crew begins to come out with their hands held high as we ask them who they are. They tell us they are part of a group known as the Graveyard Tanks and that they try to make what they can from the recent additional wreckage that lays waste across the lands due to the plague's advance. Much of the money and resources in plague territory have been absorbed by the plague and have left many trying to survive and hiding without a way to defend themselves or be able to afford tanks. They explain that they thought we were one of them as they've been in hiding as well and have lost many before them. We ask if they would like to join us, but the crew asks if we can help fix up their tank and they will return to their clan to discuss an alliance. We agree as we begin to try and fix up what we can of our tanks once more, wondering if the save was really worth it and if the crew of the graveyard tank would ever really seek to have their clan join us once we part ways or if they disappear forever like the many we've tried saving before, never to be seen again.